Welcome to Writing in Plain Legal English, Part 2. In our last screencast, I discussed a few basic concepts that your goal is communication and you need to make your reader's job easy. And to that end, a short sentence is easier to read than a long sentence, and plain short words are easier to understand than long words. I also talked about the value of signposting if you use topic sentences, and we'll explore that a little later and clear headings, you'll allow your reader to follow where you're going, and that's going to make your document much easier to understand. I also noted that I was going to be drawing a lot of examples from Brian Garner's Writing in Plain Legal English, and I recommended that you check out his website, as it has a lot of potentially useful exercises. As I said, he teaches using about 50 principles. In these broadcasts, I just want to deal with about 18. Let's talk about the first three of those. It's important that you have something to say and think it through. No piece of writing should ever just be, tell me everything you know about this topic. Uh, examiners won't like that. Clients won't like that. No reader likes that. No one wants an undigested lump of information. They want a sense that you're trying to communicate something to them not just transfer everything that's in your head to their head. So to that end, plan what you're doing. Divide the document into sections and divide the sections into smaller parts. And if you use headings and subheadings for each of these steps, then those headings themselves, if they're informative, will probably save you several sentences of explanation. A nice clear heading saying, for example, the law of judicial review tells your reader what's coming next. They know it's going to be about the law of judicial review. There's no need to explain to them how you got to this point in the essay. And think about it. You must have read documents, books, journal articles, whatever, where you've been really frustrated because it's, you suddenly wake up at some point and go, wait a minute, why am I reading this? How did I get to this point? And you can't easily track back to how the writer has led you to this point. Headings will really help. Particularly if you're writing for a legal audience, uh, you're not trying to build a sense of drama and surprise. You're trying to convince people by laying information out as logically as you can. So audio material in a logical sequence. When you're presenting facts, lay them out in chronological order. That's always going to be the simplest format for your reader to follow and keep related material together. Think, have I put everything that is logically related to the topic I'm presently discussing under the one heading? Let's move on. In terms of writing individual sentences, three principles you should always keep in mind are omit unnecessary words, keep your average sentence length to about 20 words or less. This goes back to our first principles, that it's always easier to understand a shorter sentence than a long sentence. And this brings us to the third point on this slide. Break longer sentences up into short ones. Readability declines past 13 words. 70 word plus sentences are just unreasonable. You can use um, word count on Microsoft Word. Run it over sentences. There is absolutely no reason you should have sentences longer than about 20 words or so. It's simply going to make the job harder than it needs to be for your reader. Okay, let's start applying these. Um, we'll do a couple of examples in uh, this screencast and then we'll pick up a few more in screencast three. So let's take some examples from Garner. So he's, in one of Garner's exercises he asks, can you take four words together, three or more words together, out of a very loyally sentence without destroying its meaning. And here we have a typical example. Even assuming that the fog caused injury to Rolk, AM schools had no duty to prevent that injury because it was idiosyncratic and AM schools could not have been expected to foresee such injury. No difference in meaning if we cut out the four words, it was idiosyncratic and. If we leave it as even assuming that the fog caused injury to Rolk, AM schools had no duty to prevent that injury because AM schools could not have been expected to foresee such injury. It's shorter, you've saved words, 
on your word limit for your essay, and it's clearer. Similarly, let's take a look at this example. Um, another one from Ghana. The council sent an inspector who made observations as to the condition of the pavement and concluded that it was uneven. Can we break that up into shorter, clearer sentences? Well, obviously we can. The council sent an inspector to inspect the pavement. She concluded it was uneven. Less wordy, less loyally, same meaning, easier to understand. So those are the kind of principles you should be bearing in mind as much as possible. Omit unnecessary words, cut them out, keep the average sentence length to about 20 words or less, and break longer sentences up into shorter ones. And we're going to continue on this theme in broadcast, uh, in screencast number three. Thank you for listening. Hope you'll tune into the next screencast.